Spiritual Teaching 262 Love Each Other 1. My spirit is pleased to contemplate you united in the same desire to approach the Master. Here, before the demonstration of my word, you forget miseries, resentments, envies, and sufferings. 2. You do well to cleanse your heart, because my word must reach it, when you have prepared it as a sanctuary. 3. Humility and simplicity is what should exist in your spiritual worship, so that the material and ostentatious do not distract you from how essential love is for your father and charity towards your fellow men. When have you come to have those moments of elevation, your thought has vibrated under the divine thought. 4. Form a united people, fraternal and lover of truth and good practices, who know how to rejoice at the arrival of new brothers, who knows how to welcome them with a smile on his lips, with true charity in his heart and with a prayer in the spirit. You will give them what you have been accumulating in the time that you have listened to me. Them you will teach the true path, the one that I have traced for you and you will enjoy knowing that you are imitating me. It does not matter that your knowledge is not yet very deep. If your charity is great, you will do true wonders. 5. This mission will never seem arduous if the person who practices it illuminates their works with love. Instead, to the one who simply practices as a duty, it may seem like a heavy cross. 6. Do not be discouraged if you judge that you are still too imperfect to carry out such a delicate mission. Goodwill conquers all. 7. I am going to show you a way to prepare so that your daily works are all inspired by noble feelings and so that the vicissitudes and difficulties do not stop you or make you regress. When you open your eyes to the light of the new day, pray, approach me through thought, then form your plan already inspired with my light and rise up to fight, intending to be strong and not miss a single moment in obedience and faith. 8. Truly I tell you, it will not be long before you marvel at your strength and the results of your work. 9. Make sure that your actions contain truth and clarity and do not fear being mocked by your brothers, because in that moment of confusion they will not know what they are doing. 10. I see that you fear judgment and criticism. I do not want you to be mocked, but if your consciousness demands nothing of you, I will be lenient to those who have offended you and will make the light of truth shine in their minds. 11. Have a true knowledge of what charity is, of how to feel it and how to impart it, so that it becomes clean and you do it without ostentation. Always ignore your left hand what your right hand gives. That is, do not give with ostentation because with it you will destroy all charity work. 12. I have wanted to form with each one of these congregations a true family in which you all love each other, in which you help in your sufferings and in your sorrows, so that among yourselves you may learn to do charity and when that feeling has developed and matured in your heart, know how to get up on the path of struggle to offer its good fruits to those in need of love and light, who will cross your path by thousands. 13. The day will come when you will stop being part of these groups of disciples who now meet to listen to my teaching. But even if you are scattered throughout various parts of the earth, in spirit you will remain united in the fight and in the performance of your position. No one can break those ties of spiritual affinity. 14. Blessed are you because you have been in harmony with your Father. Not an impure thought has disturbed your mind in this hour of communion with your God. Everything has been harmony and in it you have heard my word in the bosom of nature, far from any enclosure. 15. Look at the magnificence of what surrounds you. The high mountains symbolizing altars in perpetual homage to the Creator, the sun as an immense lamp illuminating the life of beings, the harmonious song of the birds, raising their trills to me which are like prayers, and in the midst of that splendor, your spirit is in ecstasy before the knowledge of the divine word. 16. My caress is with you, my light is shed in flashes, and at the same time I collect from your heart the offering that you have brought me. 17. Thus, in this atmosphere of elevation and spirituality, you will see the greatest wonders performed among you. Ask for the sick, for the needy, for the absent, for the lost, because they will greatly receive. 18. Beloved people, in order to present yourselves before your Father, you seek the best offering. You have entered into purification to wash away the faults that your conscience indicates to you, and after repentance for having sinned, you prepare the sanctuary to be in communion with me. 
19. Watch and pray. I teach you to be strong in the face of temptation and you not sin again. Pray for yourself and for those who do not know how to pray. How long will you need to pray each day? Perhaps long hours to raise your spirit to the Father? No people five minutes will do. That short time of love, of surrender to. Me is the time you need to offer me your submission and compliance with my provisions in the day you live. I will know how to comfort you in your tribulations, to encourage you in your work and enlighten you for the development of your companies. 20. Whenever you need a confidant, a kind friend, seek me and deposit in me the pains that are in your heart, and I will advise you the best way, the solution you seek. If your spirit is overwhelmed by sorrows, it is because you have sin, I will receive you and be benevolent in my judgment. I will fortify your purpose of amendment and I will give you back your lost strength. 21. Only the practice of my teachings will preserve you in grace and spiritual and corporal health. The experience you collect will be light that you will accumulate in your spirit. 22. My judgment and my law are inexorable, and if you have to pay your debts at this time, do it with love, patiently, and when you find yourself tired, I will hold your cross, so that you will gain new strength to continue fighting. 23. If you know that your destiny is written, that only trials polish the heart and bend the flesh, why do you rebel? 24. Your spirit has been endowed with great strength, and the tests that I send you are not greater than the power and energy that you have. They are beneficial, they help you to earn merit and save you. 25. My Father's spirit suffers as I contemplate the pain of humanity. I have not punished her. My laws of love and justice, put into practice, bring only good, good fortune and peace. 26. Because of man, the elements of destruction have been unleashed. War has sown its seed in all hearts. How much pain humanity has felt. How much desolation, misery, orphanhood and mourning has he left in his wake. Do you think that the spirit of those who have fallen in the conflict has perished, or that that part of life has ceased to exist, of eternity that dwells in man? 27. No, people, the spirit survives war and death. That part of my own spirit has risen from the fields of pain and searched my way for a new horizon, to continue living, developing and evolving. 28. Those who have remained on earth and have seen its devastated regions, its devastated fields, the plague and the hunger, the principles of morality and well fallen to the ground, I have preserved their strength and I have watched over all. There are the spirits that have not lost faith. They are getting closer to me. I have made them feel my presence and they have contemplated. 29. In future times I will use them to bring the light of my word to other peoples. I will entrust them with a great spiritual mission. 30. They have learned to pray as I have taught you. There is no pain, no misery in those spirits. There is greatness because in the midst of their trial they have loved me, understood me and obeyed me. They have been refined in pain. 31. People, unite your prayer to that of those spirits. You have not been purified in pain. Your crucible it has been the peace that I have come to offer you at this time in my word of love. When you find yourselves prepared, some for pain and others for love, you will embrace, you will unite and together in the fulfillment of my teachings you will analyze my word. You will drink this cup of love and confirm that it has been beneficial all that you have received. I will carry out my work and I will show you at the end, the result of it. Over the ruins spiritual and moral that humanity presents, I will raise a healthy and strong world. 32. Your judgment is being prepared, people, and just as the other peoples have borne the weight of my justice, you will receive it in the appointed time according to your works. 33. I welcome you all, both those who come eager to hear me, those who enter to scrutinize or those who much self-sufficiency denies everything he has heard and comes only out of curiosity. 34. Truly I tell you that my vibration has been and will be forever. Yesterday in one form, today in another, tomorrow in another, and like this for an eternity. 35. There is a bond between father and children, which can never be broken, and that bond is the cause of communication between the Divine Spirit and that of all of you. 36. 
Blessed is he who seeks the truth because he is thirsty for love, light, and goodness. Seek and you will find. Seek the truth and it will meet you. Keep meditating. Keep questioning the arcanum and he will answer you. Because never has the father remained silent or indifferent to the one who anxiously questions him. 37. How many who are looking for the truth in books, among the sages and diverse science, will end up finding it in themselves, since in the depths of each man I have deposited a seed of eternal truth. 38. Here is my light vibrating in a human brain and speaking. Why do you judge this communication impossible? Do you think that man can have more power than God by achieving with his science communication at a distance between them? 39. Truly I tell you, if you do not know the faculties with which the spirit of man is endowed, the less you will know me. 40. I communicate through human understanding because the brain is the perfect apparatus made by the Creator so that intelligence may be manifested in Him, which is the light of the Spirit. 41. This device is the model that you can never match with all your science. You will take its form and its construction as a model for your creations, but you will never reach the perfection that works have of your Creator. Why do you doubt that I can use what I have formed? 42. I tell you again that you still do not know each other, because if you knew each other spiritually, you would not only accept this divine communication through the understanding, but you would understand that even greater surprises are reserved. If you knew each other, you would not complain of not being understood by your brothers, when not even you know yourselves. Get to know each other so that you work without question, so that you do not go looking in many places for the answer that you carry within you. 43. All my doctrine aims to discover before your eyes what your being contains. Because of that knowledge is born the light to find the path that leads to the eternal, to the perfect, to God. 44. My doctrine tends to form within you a being superior to all that surrounds you in the world, a being that is elevation, light and spiritual beauty, virtue, wisdom and power. How great then will your joy and your inner peace, your consciousness will tell you, this is the true essence of your being. How different will be the conduct of those who, having rejected every good seed from their hearts, have consecrated his being to a selfish life, to a materialistic and perverse life. When they have come to look up at their interior, when they have had a moment of communication with their consciousness, they have contemplated themselves in that mirror that never tarnishes, that never lies, and they have been horrified at the monster they carry in themselves and to which they cannot recognize as their own doing. 45. O oh, disbelievers, come listen to me often. My word will overcome your doubt. If you think that the form of my word is not the same as I had at that time, I tell you, do not stop at the form at what is exterior, but look for the meaning, which is the same. The essence, the sense are always one because the divine it is eternal and immutable. But the form in which the revelation comes to you or through which I make known to you a part more of the truth, that is always presented according to the capacity or evolution that you have reached. 46. A large part of my teaching has been aimed at meeting each other, getting to know each other, so that you stop having to fall on the road and stop crying out for mercy when you feel lost or miserable. 47. Why cry carrying so many riches and hidden treasures in your being? This is one of the purposes of your life that you have long forgotten. You must know each other to discover everything that the Spirit keeps. 48. Question, scrutinize, deepen yourselves and the more you penetrate into your being, the greater treasures and surprises you will find. 49. Crowds, come with me, I come to save you. When your world tires you, when they ignore you, your brothers, when yours do not understand you, come to me and I will come out to meet you. I will prove that I was not ignorant of what was happening to you. 50. Come so that I may resurrect you to true life and remind you that you have been created to give. But as long as you do not know what you carry in you, it will be impossible for you to give to those who need it. 51. See how everything around you fulfills the mission of giving. The elements, the stars, beings, plants, flowers and birds, everything from the largest to the imperceptible, have the gift and the destiny of giving. Why do you make an exception for yourselves? being those most endowed with divine grace and love. 52.
how much you will have to grow in wisdom, in love, in virtue and power so that you may be light on the path of your little brothers. What a lofty and beautiful destiny I have brought you. 53. Feel my peace and take it to the depths of your heart. Don't let anyone take my peace from you. It is a treasure, the greatest that man can possess. 54. The power and science have not been able to give you peace. However, I tell you, do not despair if you do not find it, because it will not be long before you understand that peace is truly in men of good will to love, to serve and to obey the laws dictated by God. 55. Hear my doctrine that comes to teach you the most practical, easy and simple way to comply with the law. Understand that your God, his works in life are easy and simple, your ignorance and your smallness are those that you make complicated what is simple and mysterious what is plain. 56. God is not complicated, mysterious, or confused in his creation, because the perfect is simple. Instead, the creatures in their different scales, the more imperfect, the more complicated. 57. Try to know me, to penetrate into the sense of the spiritual until you can have a true idea of your father. Even if your knowledge of me is small, but may it be correct. 58. Having a real idea of my existence, my essence, my power, and my justice, you will be able, when the moment comes, bring to your brothers a true idea of what I am. 59. You will see how the God that men have seen as distant, inaccessible, mysterious, and incomprehensible. It will disappear so that in its place arises the true God, whose heart is eternally open for your children, present everywhere and at all times. 60. When you truly know me, because even your concept is more human than spiritual and your little faith, you will love me more deeply than now. When you love me more perfectly, you will be tirelessly carrying the light wherever you find darkness. Your pity will be sincere towards all those who do not know the true Father. For those who believe they love me and know me in truth, do not know me they don't really love me purely. 61. In the second era I like to cross the countryside, in which the farmers, seeing me pass by, came to me, meeting and with their hearts they spoke to me. My spirit enjoyed contemplating them pure and simple. It penetrated into homes, sometimes at the moment when parents with their little ones sat at the table. Hearing my call they came to me, joyful, inviting me to eat with them, they opened their hearts to ask me for some grace. I blessed everyone and meeting with my disciples told them, these families are an image of the kingdom of heaven and these homes are like sanctuaries. 62. There were times when finding myself lonely, I was discovered by children, who, reaching me they came to look at me, to offer me flowers, to tell me about some trouble and to offer me their kisses. 63. Mothers were saddened to find their little ones in my arms listening to my word. The disciples, believing that it meant a lack of respect towards the master, they tried to drive them away from my presence, so I had to tell them, let the children come to me because for you to be able to penetrate the kingdom of heaven, it is necessary that you have the purity and simplicity the trust of children. 64. I took pleasure in that innocence and that candor, as one who delights his gaze contemplating a nearby cocoon to open up. 65. They are also spirits in a cocoon, promises for tomorrow, lives that begin to vibrate. 66. I love spirits because they are buds that have to flourish for life and for the glory of the Father. 67. On a certain occasion I was invited to a wedding in union with Mary, my mother on earth. I wanted to be with my children in that transcendental moment in the life of two beings who come together for love. I wanted to contemplate the joy of those hearts and coexist with them and their party, giving you to understand with that that none of your healthy joys is indifferent to me and that my presence cannot be absent in any of the important or transcendental moments of your life and also Mary, your sweet mother and intercessor, gave proof of what his mission is for this humanity by asking Jesus to, making use of his power, he increased the wine of the party that for moments was scarce. I granted that prodigy for that. Blessed intercession for that heart of a woman whose faith in my power and intuition to ask are a perfect example before you. 68. Let me mention even briefly those passages, but do not say that it is essential that I return to the world, because I will have to tell you that everything that I lived and spoke was written and is present in your consciousness. 
On the other hand, you must recognize that this life, wonderful in all its phases, is a deep and infinite book that speaks to you eternally of me. 69. Observe her, feel her, and you will find in her the master, the father and the judge. You will hear the voice that from here speaks to you of another higher life, brighter and perfect. 70. Disciples. I have come to raise you up from the dust of the earth, where you lay defeated by pain, to a life of hope and of realities. I have made you feel my strength in your trials. I have taught you not to doubt, not to despair even in the greatest bitterness. 71. Today you know that the chalice of bitterness is being drunk by all humanity, that you are not the only ones who suffer or the only ones who cry or those who with greater intensity rush the pain, for which you thank me and put your thoughts in the heart of your brothers, forgetting a little about yours. 72. All of you have a wound in your heart. Who is like me to penetrate inside you? I know of your bitterness, your sadness and discouragement before so much injustice and ingratitude that exists in your world. I know of the fatigue of those who have lived and fought on earth and whose existence is for them like a heavy burden. I know of the emptiness of those who are left alone in this life. I say to all of you, ask what will be given to you, because that is what I have come to give you as you need from me, either company, tranquility, bomb, missions, or light. 73. Do not be afraid to cry in front of me, men, for tears are not only those of the child or the woman. Bless those who mourn before the Father, because my hand will wipe away their tears and my word of comfort will descend to their heart. Whoever comes weak before me will later be strong before his brothers, because he knew how to strengthen himself in the power of his Father. 74. Know that I am not concrete to feel your afflictions, but that I come to remedy them. But besides knowing this, it is necessary that you have love and faith in my law, that you know how to ask and pray, and that you have patience in the tests. My peace be with you.